Welcome to the ministry of Joseph Ikoko, where the emphasis is on the word, the worship, and the warfare of the believer. I believe as you make ears for this message from the prophet of God, your life will never be the same. Stay tuned. Father, in the name of Jesus, prove yourself strong. Prove yourself strong. Prove in fact, there's no one here who can say you fly to them. Man may lie, but you never lie. We give you glory. Then Jesus fight to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, take your Bibles. If your Bible is your hand, just take your hand. Let's read Matthew eleven twenty eight. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 You see next time you prove that some my money is small yeah. Yeah. I know you just can't so next time give us more some so the people will give more money We need to buy our own property hallelujah yeah. I would also want to encourage everyone if every church member has been levied 500 pounds If by year I'm paying ah, for me there's, there's an assignment I'm not paying 500 I've been told by God to pay more. So I would want to encourage everyone here be part of this historic process. Amen. And you've got a whole year, a whole year, a whole year, a whole year to redeem yourself. For the next, I think, three or four weeks till we get to the 31st, the Lord has laid on my heart a particular subject I want us to discuss. How to finish well. Turn to the person next to you and tell them it's all about finishing well. I can't hear you. How to finish well. How to finish well. Okay, Matthew chapter 11, 28. Josh, what you do for me is that. Oh, we can see the scripture. Come unto me, O ye that labor. And a heavy labor, and I will give you rest. Shall we please read? Come unto me, ready, go. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Ready, let's go. Again. Okay, Josh, let's go to Philippians chapter 3, 13 through to 14. Everybody wants to finish well. It's interesting how we all desire to finish well in life. Everybody wants to finish well. We are not too worried about today than we are worried about what's Amen? Amen. Amen? That's why we save money. That's why we sign up for insurance. Because you see, God gave us the gift of today. And because tomorrow is a mystery, He's hidden the, or the, 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 the things that are going to happen tomorrow from us. And that we ought to lean on Him if we truly want to excel in our tomorrow. Philippians chapter 3, 13 through to uh, 14. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do. Say one thing. One thing. One thing. One thing. One thing. I can hear only 10 people. Hello. Hi. Say one thing. One thing. I do. I do. One thing. One thing. I have to do. I have to do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. The only reason why, verse 14, I can press towards the mark for the price, not price. There's a difference between price and price. Price is how much you pay for something. Price is what you are given when you are the cheaper. Amen. Amen. Not every individual in life is given a price. But every one of us will have to pay a price. Amen. Amen. 
And so, everybody wants to finish well. Everybody sitting here under the sound of my voice. Everybody wants to finish well. And in order to finish well, you need to understand certain principles that are at work. I keep saying that just wishing is not enough. Wishing is for lazy people. To wish, it is all right to wish, but it is dangerous if you don't pay the price concerning your wish. And so there's an old English adage that says that if wishes were horses, beggars would have done what written on them. Why? Every beggar wishes that a rich man will come and one day change their status. And I believe this message is appropriate for this time of the year as we enter we're, we're in December, just about to get onto the threshold of the year 2013. How to finish well. This message is relevant today, and it's going to be relevant tomorrow, and it's going to be relevant when I'm 50 years. It's all about finishing well. The saddest reality is that uh, uh, most of us never thought in a negative that this is how life was going to be. We never thought maybe you never thought you were going to be divorced. You never thought uh, this will happen. You never thought you were going to lose your money. You never thought uh, that was going to happen. Yeah, by now, I thought at 35, I thought I would be commanding a very large congregation uh, seeing where we started. But it's not too late. Because you see, the mystery of tomorrow. It's a very powerful mystery. Amen. No child of God has to worry about their tomorrow because Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, where you are nobody, Jesus was. The same yesterday, today, whatever is happening in your life today, Jesus is. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Tomorrow is part of your forever. And I want to submit to the next person that it doesn't matter what yesterday uh, 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 been. It doesn't matter the, the challenges you've been through yesterday. It doesn't matter what you're experiencing right now. If you understand the mystery of Jesus being part of the forever, your tomorrow will be better than your yesterday and your today. Uh, your aim in this week. Amen. I said your tomorrow will be better than your yesterday and your today. Amen. In order to finish well, that's why I got that graphic. Uh, uh, Josh, Josh, take up all the scripture and let the graphic stay. Josh, you're a good engineer. Keep it up. Amen. Bring me the graphic. Now, now, now. Out of the thousands of people running, just only one individual seem to have crossed the finishing line. This is the reality with life. But when it comes to serving God, how you finish is a matter of a choice. <clears throat> Amen? Amen. In reality, nobody loses out in Christ. The writer says that a, 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 a farmer chose laborers. He called some laborers in the morning. And he agreed how much he was going to pay them. Please listen to me carefully. If you think I'm going to speak to you, forget it. So open your ears. <laughs> Amen. He called some people in the morning. Called you when you were about 20. Agreed that if you accept, I will bless you. Call the next person when the next person was about 40. Agreed that if you accept, I will bless you. Call the next individual. Who was just about to die and said, if you, if you, if you accept, I will bless you. And everybody agreed. And the writer says that he called some people at the last time when the contract was about to finish. And he agreed the same amount with them. Now, at the end of the day, everybody came around. Yes, one city. Yes, one city. Yes, one city. The individual that started earlier thought they had been disenfranchised. No. <coughs> In God, your blessing will come. 
and your blessing is different from my blessing. Amen. Whatever time your blessing comes, it is because God has determined it so. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Whatever day your blessing comes, it is because you agree that you will excel. And the master said that if you excel, I will bless you. Amen? Yes. You see, many of us are caught up in competitive Christianity. And that's why we don't see the glory of God. Mr. A, why do we pastors always desire that our churches will grow even when God is taking us through a process? Because I started about 20 years ago. And by now my church is grown. But to receive the blessings of God is a process. Say a process. Say a process. And so the first principle, everybody here, including myself, if you really want to excel, and if you really want to finish well in life, the first principle you need to understand is that you have to let go of everybody. Say everybody. Everybody. Are you here? Yes. Hello? Yes. I said let go of every baggage. Say every baggage. Every baggage. Okay, it says the same thing. Hallelujah. The more you grow, I'm understanding something. The more you grow, the more baggages you will pick along the way. Yes. Oh, talk to me. The more you grow old, I came to London with a lot of hair. <laughs> oh yes, that's what I know. Now I'm struggling to maintain that which is here. The more you grow, the more packages you will pick along the way. And it's a reality of life. And it's a fact of life. However, you see, you see, you see, there are three classes of people that have come to you, have come across. There are some people, they accept their packages. And then we, if we are saying I'm going to be that the devil is alive. If you cry no more, you cry for the end of 10 years, not even 15 years, the devil is alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I always say, everyone, when they are growing up, they go with sickness. So maybe it's the same blood, like, the devil is alive. Yeah. Yeah. That some people they accept your baggages, and whenever you accept your baggage, you negate the power of God's word and you reduce the word of God to nothing. But the devil is alive today in the name of Jesus. If you're that type of individual who's accepted your baggage, you'll be loose, loose, and loose, and loose. Because if the sun sets you free, you're free indeed, and your freedom will be in manifestation. The next class of people. Are those, as Chima Chime will say, and things fall apart. A trier, a trier, and a trier. Uh, the falcon cannot hear the falcon if you read uh, literature. Things fall apart, and the center cannot go. At least I have done something. That's how we confess ourselves. At least I tried. At least I've done something. You see, to serve God is not about me at least. Because the writer said, you'll be on top and not beneath. You'll be above and not below. Amen. <laughs> they try and manage their, their baggage. But you see, baggage is baggage. And nobody crosses the finish line. I will prove to you in scripture. Nobody crosses the finish line with any baggage on. So if you want to really finish well, how to finish well in life, and how to finish well this year, you have no right to be holding on to some baggages in your life. You've got to let go of the bitterness, the pain, and what this individual did to me, and the, that man did to me. You have no time. And time is nobody's friend. And the more you delay your time, the more you delay your blessing. What's got to be done now, it's got to be done now. Say now. now. Oh, it's been say now. now. They try and manage. You're, you're counseling them. You're giving them prophetic insight. That's it. You can deal with Oh, but Pastor, I've been trying it. I've been doing this. You haven't done that. You haven't done anything. You haven't done anything. In fact, if you want to excel one well in life, there's something called price to pay you. Jacob wanted his name changed. The Bible said Jacob had wrestled 
with an individual throughout the whole night. Some of you pray for two minutes. It's a trouble. But Jacob had wrestled through. Why? Because he wanted to finish well. Oh, I pray that God will help you finish well. I said, I pray that God will help you finish well. I say, I pray that God will help you finish well. Wrestle with somebody throughout the whole night. For the next four weeks, four weeks you're going to have me. And we are going to deal with the packages. You have to let go of those packages. I was talking to somebody and we're, we're, we're out and we're eating. I said, ah, back in Ghana, cook was a luxury. When you have cook, just a bottle of coke. Christmas. Many days you have forgotten. <laughs> One time I was ill with diarrhea and somebody came and said, Oh, if you buy coke for Joe and he drinks the coke, diarrhea will go. And I said, Oh, bring me the coke. <laughs> and it took me the whole day to drink one bottle of coke. <laughs> now you walk into any shop and you can buy every coke in that shop. Listen, life will change. Time will change. Certain things in your life will change. But it's all dependent on how you, 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 you strategize your life. You're not in competition with anybody. You see, I, I, I look at some people and I'm wondering why they are in a rush, in a rush. Where are you going? You're not in competition with the next person. In fact, your greatest enemy is your inability. Because you see, when God at your door. What God wanted Cain to understand is that your greatest struggle in life Cain is sin. And if you don't overcome sin, it will be the same in your life which the enemy will come and overtake your life. And he couldn't overcome sin. So he became a fugitive. They try and manage their baggages. They try and, and, and give themselves a I've seen a lot of people giving themselves excuses. Asking, oh, oh, that may be, but maybe it's either you are emphatic, you're defined, or forget it. It's either you want it or you don't want it. Because in Christ there's no middle ground. And in order to finish well in life, you have to truly understand who you are. Define yourself first. And know what God has called you to do. And know where God has placed you. And know how God spoke to you and what he said to you. He said to us every word. Look at your neighbor and ask that your neighbor, do you want to finish well? Get rid of the baggages. Show some people. One in the morning, the other in the afternoon, the other evening and the other night and decided that I'm going to pay everyone the same amount. When they got to the point of payment, one man, one, one man was angry. You just called, you called me from the morning. Now you're paying me the same amount as you paid this individual. Did I not have a contract with you? Did you not sign up? Did you not agree? What is your problem? You see, you see, why are some of us struggling? Because number one, we don't understand that God called you and called you alone and decided to bless you and decided to have a word with you alone. Psalm 119, 49, 50. Remember the word which thou hast spoken to your servant. Ah, it is my comfort in my time of affliction. Once I am in trouble and I try and I cry out unto God and I tell him, remember your word which you've spoken to me. I am at peace because he spoke a word to me and me alone and my ears alone heard him speak and everything he said was about me, not about the next person. So whatever I'm going through, he has a word for me. I am definitely going to finish well. And I see you finish the well. I see you finish the well. I see you finish the well. Remember your work, God. You said I am blessed and not cursed. You said your favor is upon me. 
You said you are my glory and the lifter of my head. You said I am on top and not beneath. You said when I go through the fire, I won't bear me. Neither will the flame scorch my skin. When I go through the waters, it will not overwhelm me. You said uh, men will walk over my head. I will go through water. I will go through fire. But you will bring me to my wealthy place. You said and you said that I am blessed and not cursed. This is the word of God for me. I will finish well. Tell somebody and tell them you will finish well. Get rid of the packages. The third class of people are people who fight. I'm seeing some fighters here. They fight to get rid of your packages. They are not afraid to be corrected. They don't care how many times they are beaten. They know that with God on their side, they will win. Am I talking to some people who are fighters? Am I speaking to some fighters? They fight to get rid of their packages. That no matter what the enemy does, one day I will be free. I see you there and I see you free. I see your money coming back. I see your contracts going through. I see your body being healed. I see your doors being opened. Because God's word is said, you are about to finish well. And if you will finish well, then every baggage has to be let go. You have to let go of that package. You have to let go of that package. Now, our introductory scripture says that come on to me, all you that are laden, uh, that are uh, heavy laden and have burdened, and I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. My difficulty with most people is when you are telling them that whatever you're dealing with has its solution in the Word of God, and they are trying to tell you that by virtual experience, they can try. But if you try and you try by the dint of your own strength and nothing is happening, it means that you've got to run back to Christ. Am I speaking this up? Yes. Now, you, you study the life of David, and every day David will do, and in uh, Samuel, the Bible says, and David inquired of the Lord. And David inquired of the Lord. Every issue that he had, and David inquired of the Lord. And the writer says in 2 Kings that there came a time that kings go to war, and David decided not to inquire of the Lord concerning the law, the war, so he stayed back. And that became a baggage in his life and that of his children. Now listen, there are some wars we are fighting. If our parents have got the revelation to fight these wars, we'll have been free by them. Yeah. Hmm? There are some issues we are dealing with. If our parents, if our forebears have taken charge, and dealt with these issues. So you see, you have no right to uh, let it go on to the next generation. And it's your duty to get rid of certain baggages and free your children from fighting a double war. It will happen in your life with Jesus. Oh, ye that I have laid in that bed and come unto me. It wasn't like Jesus having a diamond. He was shouting his voice out. If you've got sickness, come unto me. I can get rid of that baggage. If you've got financial issues, come unto me. I can get rid of that baggage. But you know what? We come to church every day and we choose the baggages Jesus should have. Amen. We choose the baggages we want to get to Jesus. Don't talk about that relationship. Deal with my head. One, two, three, enemy fire! But you see, there's a difference between weakness and sin and mistakes. I keep saying that when you make mistakes, there's an opportunity for a retake. Amen? Your weaknesses are things you don't deal with. And if the enemy wants to hold you captive, he will use your weaknesses to cause you to sin. And once he gets you through your weaknesses, he's going to get you to sin. You have to let go of the baggages. <coughs> the baggages of, I don't talk to this, I don't do that. And then I wonder how some people can come to church and for 10 years you, you, you don't speak to somebody close to you. It's time to madness. You don't understand this. 
I don't want to talk to this person. I don't show them. <laughs> if you thought you were coming to London, show the people in there and you will show them. Forget it. No coffee or by the time you get back to Ghana, they are blessed and highly exalted. And if you're not careful, who may be sick and walk around my foot for? Who may be sick and you don't get around the same thing as before? Let go of your marriages. Now, some of us are miracles have delayed. It's not because God is not going to bless us. Our miracles have, have delayed because we've got issues and marriages we don't want to let go. And you see, any time you're incumbent, you've got baggages, you're, you're, you're crushed under the burden of baggages, you come here clearly from God. You will never hear clearly from God. Now you find out that the scripture, we read something about uh, Genesis uh, 13. When God, uh, Abraham had to separate himself, when you take time and read the whole scripture, Genesis 13, you find out God never said anything to Abraham. As long as Lot was with him, the very day Lot departed, the word of God came. You will have to let go of that package. I said you will have to let go of that package. I said you will have to let go of that package. You see, the difference between your now and your tomorrow will be based on the baggages you let go. So you can be free to be who God created you to be. Am I speaking to someone? Excellence is a spirit. And before you can be excellent in the outward, You've got to have a spirit that is full of excellence. Daniel, in whom there is the spirit of excellence. How to finish it. Everybody here wants to cross the finish line. Just give me Hebrews chapter 12. Now, now, now looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him and draw the cross, despised the shame, and is now set at the right hand of God. Despise the shame and do the cross. They said that brethren, see that we are so encompassed by Hebrews chapter 12, quick son. Yes. One. So we are so encompassed about by a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin that easily besets us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Life. There's a race. Hallelujah. Yeah. But it's not the race of competition with the next person. It's your race. And if you allow go, you will win your race. Oh yes. It's not my job. Just finish. I'm telling you, if you allow go, and if you allow God to mold you, and, and if you fit into God's own character, you will need to struggle for certain things to come to pass. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many have gone before you. If only you will walk with God, allow Him to deal with your baggages. Once He takes off the baggages, I promise you, you will fly. You will swarm like the eagle, swarm, mount up with wings like the, like the eagle, and you will take possession of that which God. I'm looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him, and do on the cross, despise the shame that is set at the right hand. finish well. I said somebody will finish well. I'm looking at people who will finish well. I'm looking at people who are winners. I'm looking at people who will finish well. You will finish well in raising your kids. You will finish well with your career. You will finish well in your vision. You will finish well in your money. In fact, redemption house, we are going to finish well. Let go of the baggage. Your baggage can be fear. Taking the first step. Psychologists say that we are born with two fears. That of noise and of falling. Everyone is born with that. The rest we take. How to finish one? How do we want to finish one? Understand what If I do that, you've done it every. In fact, when God gets ready to bless you, 
It takes a split second. Yes. You don't have to worry. And one of the things I'm telling myself, what is your time? It's your time. Oh, I, I don't know who I'm talking to. People, listen. What is your time? It is your time. Yes. They can see. They can do whatever. The Bible said there's no definition of sorcery. And some unfair and to prove it with you, Jacob. There's no definition of sorcery against Jacob. When God gets ready and it's your time, it will be your time. Ah, it will be your time. I said it will be your time. Shout, it will be my time. Okay, we are getting there. Hello? Hi. Am I helping somebody? Yes. Martinez. The story of Martinez. And sitting by the roadside. We don't know how many years. And in actual sense, the word Martinez is a combination of the word bar and Timaeus. Meaning son of. So situations, the situation he had gone through, had played him so much, everyone had forgotten his name. I believe his father was significant. That is why they have to refer to his father to him. You would not be a reference point for anybody. Yeah. I said you would not be a byword for anybody. Yeah. You would not be a prophet for anybody. Yeah. You're so significant, people will come straight to you. Yes. Sat by the roadside for all these years. I think Mark 6 or something like that. Forget the son. You probably might get to work. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Keep quiet. We who have been in this church for so many years, we are even fighting to get our blessing. You just came to the church and you were, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, you can come to church and you probably might never connect until you will miss your breakthrough. You see, people come to church, they are singing, they are busy talking. We are worshiping, they are busy moving up and down. They teach you a principle. Whenever you come to church, try and connect. Because God can bless you through the worship. God can bless you through your offering. God can bless you through the work. And in fact, God can just bless you because you are caught up in this vortex of the anointing. And that's what makes the difference. Son of David, have mercy on me. I learned the principle the other day. There's a difference between an echo and a voice. <laughs> No clarity. For a double minded person should not believe they will get anything from God. I learned that principle. It's either you're a voice or you're an echo. Because in Psalm 24, it says that the voice of the Lord is upon many voices. The voice of the Lord is strong and you can be one. The voice of the Lord causes the, uh, uh, breaks the seed of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord causes the cows to escape. So we go to a point and say, lift up your head, O ye gates. Why? Because the voice of God was at work. I pray that God will make you a voice, not an echo. That when you start to speak, people will hear the voice, not a noise. I said, not a noise, but a voice. Not a noise, but a voice. When you sell your CV, let people hear the voice, not a noise. And when you start to speak, let people hear your voice, not a noise. And 
somebody will stand across the north and shout to Jesus, ah, some of them have a one pound, one pound, pound, and somebody will shout. Because you see, whenever God connects with a voice, God responds with the voice. The Bible said, Jesus said, bring him today in the name of Jesus. If you're late in life, Jesus is saying, come. Somebody is coming out. You're being called into your excellence. You're being called into your breakthrough. You're being called into your reposition. Bring him to me.
are no longer for the Jews and for everyone who is born today. You can't claim. Finish him well. It's a principle, and it's something every one of us should decide. Decide to see your kids go. To see them run off to excellent men and women of virtue. To see them employed in high class uh, 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 companies where you don't have to struggle, you don't have to, they don't have to struggle. To see your body run off. To see things all together for you. It starts with you. Let go of the baggages. Because if you hold on to the baggage, Jesus cannot call. And when he calls you, you won't be ready to let go of the old. You see, any time Jesus calls a person, it is about moving them from the familiar into the unfamiliar. It is about moving them from their disgrace and pain into his grace. Do you let go of the baggage? The baggage of sin. The baggage of unforgiveness. The baggage of bitterness. You see, you see, some of us, I don't understand. Why would you want someone to hold your mind ransom for 20 years? Why would you want men find channel? Ten years! The memory of what that individual did to you is etched on your mind. Who is a slave? So you can't be all about ten and you're not telling me that. But it's that attitude. I told you the other day, if a man sins, a sin against himself, God is too holy. He is giving you the antidote. If a man commits adultery, they commit it against themselves. If you forgive, it's against yourself. If you won't forgive, it's against yourself. Who loses? You lose it. Am I speaking to someone? If you don't let go of the baggage, I can trust you. You will come to church. We will pray for you. We will prophesy. In fact, sometimes we do spit on people. In the vein of Jesus, we will spit on you, mix it with the olive oil. Why? Because baggage stops people from excelling. They stop people from excelling. They stop people from moving forward. I mean, I only have to come to London to hear this one. And God will show up. I said, I will move you on. It's also possible to move you on. Tell somebody you got to move on. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You got to move on. Oh, yes. Your baggage will destroy the one. I'm telling you. The Bible said nobody can put a new wine into that old wine. You want the blessings of God. But you see, you are not prepared to change the bag in which the bag in which the wine has to come. And the Bible says that if you put new wine into old wine, what happens? It turns sour. And Jesus said, Go unto you. It were the rock falls on you. It would have been better if you had fallen from the rock. Ten years from now, your body, if you don't let it go, you will still pay. Those who let go of your body are free, are going to be free. In fact, they will be light. So we will have to have our body. Mm -hmm. Now we can imagine too. It will not be to me. It will not be to me. I just should go with it. I don't know if you can't get it. I don't know if you can't get it. Who cares? Somebody wants to go slow. You see, somebody wants to finish with. I want to finish with. Paul's, in, in Philippians 3, 34, Paul is saying, Paul is saying that it isn't that I have gotten the breakthrough yet, but it's one thing I do. I forget my baggage. I forget my past. I let go of what someone did to me 10 years ago. Of what happened when I was a kid. Because when I was a, a child, I used to think that now that I am a man and I have no right to allow childish stuff to flow through my mind, I've got to let go of the old stuff and, and embrace the possibilities of the future. Pop is futuristic. And there's so much power 
a photo and a feature two photos. So if you can't let go of that man who left you, how can you let in the person God has prepared for the world? If you can't let go of that opportunity that you left, how can you let in that which God is bringing? Some of us, you see, we had to go through a series of things because God wanted to teach us lessons in life. So we can finish. May God let you finish well. Amen. I said, may God cause you to finish well. Amen. May God send you help so you can finish well. Amen. Everything which is of a baggage in your life, I cast its roots in Jesus' name. Amen. For the Bible says that whatsoever my heavenly Father did not plan, it shall be uprooted. And so today, in the name of Jesus, any baggage in your life, it is uprooted. It is uprooted. It is uprooted. It is uprooted. By the days of bitterness, you are uprooted. By the days of unforgiveness, you are uprooted. By the days of pain, you are uprooted. That the children of God will be free to be who God created them to be. Stand up. Hallelujah. How to finish well, people. It's all about letting go. We believe you've been blessed by this message. Put it to good use and watch the Word of God change your life. You can visit us on the web at www.josephacuacon.org Send us an email at info at josephacuacon.org God richly bless you. We believe you've been blessed by this message. Put it to good use and watch the Word of God change your life. You can visit us on the web at www.josephacuacon.org Send us an email at info at josephacuacon.org God richly bless you. We believe you've been blessed by this message. Put it to good use and watch the Word of God change your life. You can visit us on the web at www.josephacuacon.org Send us an email at info at josephacuacon.org God richly bless you. blessed by this message. Put it to good use and watch the Word of God change your life. You can visit us on the web at www.josephacuacon.org Send us an email at info at God richly bless you.